Online security tips. Number one, this is a new playlist on my channel intended to provide online security tips to individuals, small businesses, people who work in large organizations because they're individuals too. So I'm going to start with showing a email that a client of mine received that turned out to be a phishing email. He fell for it. He typed in his credentials and then afterwards realized it was bogus because it didn't do anything. It didn't do what it purported to do. So here's what it looks like. I have some things blurred out. This is, he pasted this email image into a Microsoft Word document. So that's why up here at the top you see indications that this is a Microsoft Word document. It's open right now into my Microsoft Word. So I have a bunch of things blurred out, but this is the content of the email down here, even with the reply and forward buttons, but those aren't clickable again because this is just an image pasted into a Microsoft Word document. So up here in the upper left corner, we have the true name, actual name of my clients. I'm not sure if he was a customer or an acquaintance or something, but they have business dealings, so it's got to be probably a, a client of my client. And shared a file and indicating a document number, which is a, a recent date. And this email was dated June 30. So that was that document supposedly June 24th. Then over here we have this letter GA, which is a valid, correct Yahoo profile icon for this person's correct valid email address. It's coming from this person's email address and this person sharing a file over over email would be not be unusual at all. So that wasn't suspicious. It's indicating that my client replied to this message, this email on July 2nd. And then down here we have Microsoft SharePoint Online. Here's the first clue that something's not right. Microsoft never spells their name M-I-C-R hyphen O-S-O-F-T. This is the bad person's attempt to get past some kind of a spam filter or a scam filter, email filter. Then down here we have the person's true name again, shared a file, document 620. All this looks legitimate for a way to share a file through Microsoft SharePoint, except for the hyphen. And then down here again, we have the person's valid name, shared a document with micro.soft, share hyphen point online. As far as I know, this micro dot soft is, is, and the micro hyphen soft are the only two indications in here that this is, that this is bogus. My client clicked on this link. It took him to a page where it asked him to put in his credentials, his Microsoft credentials, which he did because he thought this was legitimately taking him to a location for that document. Now, if he had looked at the bottom left corner of the screen when he floated the mouse over this, I think he would have seen a URL that did not look like a valid Microsoft SharePoint URL. Of course, you have to be in the habit of doing that first to remember to do it and second to recognize, no, that doesn't look legitimate. I don't know what it looked like. So then we move on to the next item here. But actually, before I do that, I should point out that my instructions to my client, he, he had inquired of me, how can I tell if my account's compromised? And my reply to him was, it's already compromised because you typed in your true and valid credentials. That is the compromise right there. As far as what is the result of the compromise or the consequence of, of that, you might not see that for a long time. You might never see that. It depends upon what the person on the other end of this was trying to do. And it's likely they were just trying to get your credentials to then sell them on the dark web to somebody else that's going to actually do something with them. So what they might do with it is download all your contact information, study your emails, figure out what the relationships are, how to try to do something. But this, this piece right here probably isn't going to get acted on immediately. It's probably not somebody sitting behind a computer and waiting for you to respond to this, but they probably sent out a massive amount of these and then when the responses come back, they capture the credentials and then they sell them to somebody else who is going to do some legwork to try to figure out something to do with that. So the appropriate action is right away 
go change your password. <laughs> Make sure you have two-factor authentication set. And that's the way to protect yourself. You don't want to wait to see what is the consequence of this particular scam. Now, here's another piece to look at on this. I took that person's email address that sent an email to my client about the shared dog. Well, he didn't send it. It was the bad guys that, that sent it. And I put in that person's email address here on the website, haveibeenpwned.com. That's spelled, pwned is P-W-N-E-D. As in owned, think of an O there. Pwned is the is nah, the compromise. We'll put it that way. So I put in that person's email address that says, oh no, pwned, pwned in five data breaches, found no pastes. So if you scroll down here, which I'm not going to do because that's going to expose his email address, there's there's five different full paragraphs of information about the data breaches. None of them are specifically Yahoo, but Yahoo seems to come across a lot of this. And perhaps it's because the common customer of Yahoo, been there for a long time, has been in the habit of using the same password on different sites. So when the email uh, address and the password gets used on other sites with the same password as they use for the email, then this person, the, the, the bad criminals on the internet can log in to this person's email account and send out emails as though they are that person. And typically they will not change the password so that they can keep operating. And then they'll delete the sent emails in order to not get caught um, as quickly. The next piece here in online security that I want to share with you today is darknetdiaries.com. It's a, it's a podcast. If you go to the website, darknetdiaries.com, you get stories here from the, from the dark side. It has to do with, with security, penetration testing, um, um, ransomware, things like that. This one, episode 96, is just an amazing story. You need to hear it. It will explain things to you like if you heard about that water department uh, ransomware in Florida, not ransomware, but that it almost, the water controls almost got altered. And all of the other smaller agency, government agents, here's a police station that fell victim. And it's an amazing story. I, I, I want to tell you things about it, but I don't want to give it away. You need to hear it. So if you go to Darknet Diaries, right on their homepage, you should see this most recent their most recent episode. If it's if you're watching this video later, then you might not see episode 96. So you can cl click up here on episodes and then uh, find 96. You can scroll down to see their prior episodes. Amazing, amazing stories. The last piece of an online security tips episode is going to be to go into my own online accounts and either set up or check up on my two-factor authentication on my actual account. So I'm going to switch over here to computer number two. And I may pause once in a while so I can set up the next screen of uh, blurs. So I come over here to this folder on my bookmarks bar, bar called credit accounts. I'm going to start with American Express, click on that. And that takes me up here in the upper right. There's a login button. I click on that. And I'm not going to click on this remember me. That gives me a little extra security, which means nobody can come up to my computer and just click on things on my computer and get into my accounts. I'm going to click up here in user ID and my last pass is going to offer me the user ID for this account and it's going to automatically put in my password. Now, of course, somebody could walk up to my computer and do that piece. Then I'll click on log. So this gets me into the landing page on the account up here in the upper right. I can choose which card I want to deal with and I want to look for the place. Now, part of the reason why I want to do this is because the places that you go to make changes on your account security is different from one site to another. So how do you find it? I believe it's on account services. And then over here, security and privacy, I'll click on that. And then here's an option for managed two-step verification. I'm going to blur the screen when I, as I go to that, and I think it's going to be fine to unblur. Yeah, here. So I do not have two-step, two-factor authentication set up on this yet because it's showing me to walk me through it. So log into your account with your user ID password. I already did that. Enter verification code. will send you a mobile to your mobile 
number or email address, we've got your back. Tell us you trust this device. Next time you use it to log in, we'll just ask you for your password. So what I'm going to do with this, like I mentioned about what if somebody can walk up to your computer and just do some clicks. So I want it to send a, a, a text to my cell phone each time that I'm logging into the account. So I'm not going to say that I trust this device because somebody else could be sitting at the device. So here I click continue and then we'll go on to the next. So it already knows my phone number. I'm going to click on text. How would you like to receive your code? Now, if I click on email, text is no longer selected. So it's an either or, or I can do a voice message. So all of these are either or you pick which way do you want to do it? I'm going to say I want it by text click and continue. And that's asking for a verification code. So I'm expecting a text message to come in on my cell phone. There it is. And it says Amex will never call you for this code. It gives me a code for online use, tells me what phone number to call if you did not request or if you released it to someone who called you. So if I get a, this note is coming through at a time when I'm not trying to log in, that tells me somebody else is trying to log in. So here that code is 858. This code is not a secret because it's a one time code 431. And you didn't get to see it anyway. I'm going to click on the eyeball. It'll show me what I typed so that I can make sure I typed it correctly and then click continue. So this is setting up the two-factor authentication for using my cell phone. I want to remember this device, use it for two-step verification. Next time I use it to log here, I'm going to go back and log in to the account and expecting two-factor authentication every time I try to log into this account. I don't try to log into it very often on, on through the internet, so I'm okay with that. I'd rather have the extra security. So I'll confirm that cell phone is what I want and click continue and then expecting a verification code. And there it is. And this is a different verification code, 890731. Click the eyeball, 890731, click continue. And then device name. I'm not gonna select this because this is for this computer. I don't want it to remember this because somebody could break into my house when I'm out of town, sit down at my computer and they could get in. So I'm going to say, no, I don't want to trust this device. Click continue. And I'm okay with that because I don't log into it all that often. So that's it for the first edition of online security tips. I hope that was useful. Have a great day. Catch you later. Goodbye.